Hello from Gardening at Duenza here in Ireland and this video is coming to you from my greenhouse. Now it's a bit of a mixed bag and I'm going to be talking about various things in this video. So first we're going to look at some epiphyllums in bloom and I'll talk about how I care for mine. We'll take a look at some hippiastrums also in flower. A quick look at my pellies with particular emphasis on some new purchases and then finally I have some really exciting plant blooming news, a first flowering. Wait till you see what it is. So you're all very welcome back to my greenhouse and just to let you know what's going on at the moment because as you will see it looks like a thief has been in here and stolen all my plants. There's practically nothing in here. And the reason why there's practically nothing in here is that it's the spring clean, the summer spring clean, the point where I take everything outside and clean the glass and take down the bubble wrap, not in that order, in the opposite order. <laughs> and then when the greenhouse is all ready, I move back some of the plants. Now the bigger stuff out there is going to be planted in the garden, but the smaller stuff comes back in. So the coming back in stage of that process is slightly underway and I've just moved in a couple of things, some of which are in flower. Now the first thing I moved back in was my pelagoniums and the reason for that is that obviously they shouldn't be out there in the rain but I felt so inspired to just repot them and tend to them and help them to be the best they possibly can and the reason for that was that I visited my friend Liga and as we all know she has her own channel but she also has an amazing pelagonium collection and wonderful polytunnels full full of beauties and I took a visit up to her place and when I was there of course I felt absolutely inspired to do better with my pelagoniums. So when I came home I repotted mine. I don't have a whole lot anymore but the ones I have I determined I'm going to grow as best I possibly can. And I repotted them and put them in the greenhouse. So that was the first thing to come in here. And as you can see some of them are coming into flower at the moment and looking very nice. And of course I didn't come back from League as empty handed. I came back with a couple of little beauties. And I will just show them to you now briefly. Now a couple of these I, I bought exclusively because of their foliage. And look at this leaf. Is that tricolored? There are four distinct shades in there. And here we can see a very dark hue in the middle, a lighter shade here, and a much lighter shade around the outside where it's really quite yellow. And isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely gorgeous. And next door we have this one. Now this one really struck me. Again for the foliage, look at that, look at that, this plant never needs to flower to earn its keep, absolutely gorgeous. But I did get one of them for the flowers and it was this particular one. Nice healthy looking foliage but it also has some buds coming down here and the flowers on this I saw one of the plants in the nursery in flower and they were gorgeous, really gorgeous. White with a flush of pink, really, really nice. And I'm going to have my own before very long. And then finally, there was this little gem. Look at that. So many delicate markings absolutely gorgeous so please go and check out Liga's channel and also her link 
uh, her website, her Pelagonia Nursery website, because she is selling online now. Now, currently, she can only post within Ireland. So if you're in Ireland, please go and check out the website. And I'll have put the link to it in the details of this video. And support her. We all need to support passionate people, people who are passionate about plants and want to share that passion and share some of it with us as well. So go and take a look. Right. Okay, so that's a bit about pelagoniums and just to show you my pelly that is looking the best at the moment and it's this particular one here called Lady Plymouth, a variegated one. Not in flower yet, but look at the foliage. Isn't it gorgeous? Absolutely fantastic. I'm really pleased with that one. So foliage, that's my tip on pelagoniums. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is some hippiastrums in flower. And we'll start with this orange species one which you saw me unbox recently. This is one that came from the Himalayan Gardens Nursery in Scotland. And as usual, name going up on the screen as we've had with everything else. And I'm really pleased with how gorgeous this has turned out. Now the flowers have just started to go over at this stage, just taken on a slightly tired look to them. But the colour is sumptuous really really super and that's the second species hippiastrum i have in my collection so i'm very pleased with it there's the other the other flower i think this one is slightly more gone over yeah that's why i turned this one down the front now i actually had this in the house but i've just taken it out to show you all for the video and the second history Hippiastrum I have in flower is right beside it and I'll just stand back so we can see the two together. So on the right we see the orange one we've just been looking at, species one, and on the left we have a hybrid. And I think this kind of encapsulates the difference between hybrid and species in many a, a plant because the one on the left is much bigger and floriferous and blousy and the one on the right, well, it's not those things. Both are eminently beautiful, but um, yeah. So the one on the left is really doing well and coming into glorious flower. And this is one I bought at some stage, at Christmas some stage. Of course, once you get them to flower at Christmas, they've been forced to flower at Christmas. And after that, it's unlikely they're ever going to flower at that time of year again, but you can get them to reflower. And at the end of this video, I link to my video on reflowering hippiastrums because you really can do it. There's absolutely no need to be throwing these beauties away after they flower. The main key is to keep them indoors over winter rather than outdoors or in the greenhouse or anything like that. And this is quite a healthy looking plant. That is doing really well. Okay, I guess it's time I talked about epiphyllums. And we'll start with the elephant in the room, or should I say, the queen in the room. And it's this fantastic, fantastic one that opened yesterday. And, well, I kept coming out every few minutes to look at her in the greenhouse every half hour and to say is she open yet is she fully open yet and I thought she might open a little bit wider than this but now at this stage I fear she isn't and unless I make the video I'm going to lose the moment and miss her flowering on a video completely but look at it the colors on this are absolutely amazing we've got this deep deep orange and just a hint of pink. I'm really delighted with this. Now I've had it for a few years. It came to me as a cutting and this is its first flowering, which is always really, really exciting. 
and you know what it has a mild scent when I came into the greenhouse first this morning I was like what's that smell um, but in a good way <laughs> and then I stuck my nose into the uh, center of the epithelium and it is definitely coming from in there really really nice gosh the birds are noisy today aren't they absolutely delighted with that and of course I have my Deutsche Kaiserines in flower little babby one here and the bigger one, the big ugly plant over here. However, you know, it's not looking so ugly at the moment. <laughs> it's got loads of flowers. And I can't believe this one leaf because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven flowers clustered at the tip of just this one leaf. It doesn't look like it could possibly support so many blooms and yet they've all opened and that's something I've noticed with the bigger epithelums, with the larger flowered ones. The leaves may start out with several buds at the tip but usually some of them abort but with the Deutsche Kaiserine she seems to be supporting it well and if we take a look at the rest of the plant we can see that it's a riot of flowers just bursting out and about to burst out all over the place and over this side too I love the little baby buds as they come up really really cute so isn't she cool now what I did promise was to let you know how I care for my epithelums and this isn't a how-to video, it's how I care for my epithelums. If you live in somewhere really, really sunny, like the west coast of the States, they seem to do really well over California way as well with epithelums where they have a lot of sun. And in fact, registration of this whole genus of plant, it's not a true genus now, <laughs> but the epithelium genus, let's just call it that for the sake of clarity in this video, the whole registration of that was, it, it takes place in the States and there's a body that takes care of that. But we can grow them in my part of the world, just not as floriferously and not as successfully. And the first thing, if you're thinking about growing epithelums is to know that this is a prima donna. This is something that is going to require a lot of space and is not going to reward you except possibly once a year. So if you're prepared to go to the trouble of growing something and looking after it and giving it space and all that kind of thing just for the sake of flowers once a year, then epithelums are for you. But when I say, and that sounds like a really bad deal, but in truth, these flowers are spectacular when they open. Absolutely spectacular. And that's why anybody who's kind of like an ardent plant person has got to try at least one in their collection. It will come as no surprise that this plant is also referred to as the cactus orchid. Actually, I don't think the plants, I don't think the flowers look like orchids at all, but some people think they do. So I keep my epithelums in the greenhouse and I have a cold greenhouse so in winter it goes down to a five degree minimum which is quite cold and in winter I don't water mine at all. Now the received knowledge is that you're supposed to continuously water epithelums less in winter but all the same you're supposed to continue watering them but I don't do that. I don't water them at all in winter because of the cold temperatures and they do fine in that way. And then once the spring starts and temperatures pick up, I start to water them gradually and then increase that. Now, this isn't a plant that's going to be kept wet because it's a cactus and, well, even though the name orchid is only in there as part of the common name, it's also a hint on the watering. So this is one that gets watered only when it dries out. Now, because it's an epiphyte, you could actually use bark, like orchid bark, in the mix of this plant. I don't, but you can. The main thing is that it has to be well-drained, so horticultural grit or sand is very important. 
if you check out the books it'll tell you that these are plants that require a bit of shade but what I found in my environment in not so sunny Ireland is that these do really well in full sun in the greenhouse so I think that advice is generally speaking for people who live in sunnier climates in terms of feeding I give my plants half strength tomato food which is a, a food high in potassium in potash and I do that every other watering and in all honesty I do it whenever I think of it really. And the final thing I want to say about epifilms is that they are really easy to propagate from leaf cuttings and these are the leaves, these ugly ugly things we see here and if you find one, if you want to propagate the plant you need to look for one that's fairly young and blemish free and vigorous and cut it and plunge it into a sandy mix and wait for a good while before you see any new growth. So this one, I guess, would be a good candidate for propagating this particular plant. And just if you do propagate from leaf cuttings, you're going to be amazed at, <laughs> at your little mini plant because when it has for example three leaves coming out of the same plant each one is going to be completely different in shape from the other and i've had people bring their epiphyllum cactuses to me and say what's that what's that what's that is that a bud is that another plant being put into the pot because do you know they just look so varied but if you take a look at this parent plant for example you can see how much the leaves vary from place to place so I guess it's no surprise. Okay, that's my tuppence worth on growing epiphyllums, which I highly recommend if you have a bit of space and if you're a mad plant person like me. They really are the most amazing plants when they come into flower and you'll be out there with your camera waiting for it to open fully, more fully, more fully, taking photos, making videos, everything like that. Okay, and that brings us near the end of this video, but there is one more thing I want to show you before I get on with the big task of sorting out this greenhouse and bringing all those plants back in from outside. And the one thing I want to show you is right up this end of the greenhouse. And you'd think it would be on this shelf here, wouldn't you, with all these pretty things in flower, but no, we have to go down. We have to go down, 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 and now, does anybody recognize this plant? This plant is my bouffant, the pride and joy of my collection, one that everybody asks about when I give my greenhouse updates because the leaves really are amazing. And mine has gone dormant, maybe about a month ago it lost its leaf. That's okay, that's what this plant does. But now, for the first time, <laughs> it's produced a flower bud. Look at that. I couldn't believe it when I saw this. I had carried all of these plants out of the greenhouse to clean it, and I'd had a bit of help, and I had personally carried out the bouffant and put it on the ground and went back and got more plants and didn't notice anything and then a little later I noticed the tag of the bouffant on the ground and I thought oh okay let's go and put that in the plant of course it took a long time to find the bouffant where it had been actually put out there on the grass among all that but I found it and I popped the, popped the label back in and as I popped the label back in that is the moment when I noticed there was a little something on top of my plant, something that hadn't been there before. And it was this bud. And this is going to produce a tall, tall spike with a whole, a whole ball of small flowers on top, which I absolutely can't wait for. So check back soon and we will, well, you can bet that as soon as this is in full flower, there'll be another video coming your way. And that brings me really to the end of this video, which I hope you liked. I hope the epithelium information was useful and I hope you liked looking at all the pretty flowers. 
please do check out Liga's website and if you're in Ireland buy from her buy lots from her okay that's all for now and uh, check back for lots more plant videos bye